Today I have a video on the Romanian 8mm Mauser that was imported into the United States in the mid to late 2010s. I think this is going to be a really interesting video that you will want to stick around for. We have PWA branded commercial Romanian 8mm Mauser ammunition. I have heard nothing but bad about these rounds. Um, I've heard some people say that they would not chamber in their rifle. I heard other people saying that they were keyholing at even close ranges. We're going to try and bet test both of those today, but we're also going to try and get some velocity reads. Two thousand six hundred. Two thousand five hundred thirty eight. Two thousand five hundred thirty three. Two thousand five hundred eighty one. All right, we have another stripper clip here, so let's shoot five more. For some reason, I was having a really hard time getting all five rounds into the magazine. Really strange. 2,592. 2,603. There we go. Popped it. 2,629. 2,595. 2,547. So that was our time on the range. First, we're going to talk about the velocity, but there are some punchlines here that you won't want to miss. Our velocity low was 2,517, and our velocity high was 2,629 feet per second. And that leads to an extreme spread of 112 feet per second from the lowest one to the highest one, and an average of 2,574 feet per second. Now, that is a really interesting velocity. One of the oddities with this round is that the three most common uh, grain weights for 8mm Mauser is light ball at 155 grain, heavy ball at about 198 to 200 grain, and then what I usually call medium ball, which is about 180 grain. This is a 170 grain bullet, which is a little bit odd. So I don't have any other rounds to compare this to in the realm of velocity. It's getting roughly 25 to 50 feet per second faster than the 180 grain ammo, and around uh, 150 to 200 feet per second slower than the 155 grain ammo. I would say that that probably puts this ammo maybe a little underpowered, but that's just an estimation looking at these numbers for me. It's not anything crazy underpowered, though. Now, the other thing that you will hear about this ammo is that it is very low quality. I've heard that this modern production Romanian 8mm really likes to keyhole, it's just poorly made, sometimes it doesn't even fit into the chambers of certain guns, so it's just a weird round. But I have a few of them, and so I thought we might as well test the keyholing thing while we can. I've previously fired some Egyptian 8mm Mauser and uh, got a group on paper, so we're going to see how this one compares. Now I have since blown up the group on paper with the Egyptian 8mm Mauser. One more little experiment. You know, sometimes you just gotta get funny. So, we're gonna shoot the Romanian stuff and see how it compares, and hopefully, just see if it's key holding or not. See if we can get a halfway decent group. Okay, so our Egyptian group was up here in the place that got blown up, uh, but I did have one impact right here that was a hang fire, so I shot a little bit low. The other four, though, were all in a two inch group right about here. 
This one, we have one, two, three, and then I believe this right here is two impacts, four and five. So at least at 50 yards, we did not experience any keyholing with this ammunition, and the group holds about what you would expect with a uh, eight millimeter Mauser cartridge. So at 50 yards, I got about a three inch group, which isn't the best accuracy, but I wasn't really going for the best accuracy. It was more just about seeing are the rounds keyholing. The simple answer is they're not, and that this ammo is capable of acceptable accuracy for plinking, which is really what I was doing here. Now, the other thing that you will hear people say is that the uh, cases will often either get ha have a hard time going into the chamber or that they will have a hard time extracting. I personally did not experience that problem to any greater degree than I've had with other military surplus ammo, just that sometimes it's a little hard to extract and it gets, you know, you have some slightly stuck cases. Nothing I've ever needed to pound out of the chamber, but just, you know, a little bit of difficulty opening the bolt. I had said that I had not had any rounds that couldn't chamber, and then I was looking in that box and found this cartridge here. You'll notice the color is a little bit different, and then when I go to chamber it, the bolt handle doesn't want to go down past this point. Now, I also was looking through that box and found this one that had, I don't know if this is lacquer or what is it that was stuck to the outside it chambers fine so i do in fact have a round of this ammo that doesn't chamber now the issue i did have was that i would have my rifle open the bolt try and load stripper clips uh, into the magazine and i wouldn't be able to get the fifth round in the first four would fit just fine and that fifth one no matter how hard i pressed just wouldn't go uh, there are kind of two theories I have for this. And both of these things could relate to both difficulty chambering and stuck cases as well. The first is that the um, lacquer on this, steel cases usually are lacquered so that they don't rust and so that they extract a little easier. The lacquer on this is really thick, noticeably thicker than other 8mm Mauser and just steel cased ammo that I've tested in the past. So this really thick lacquer... Um, might just be basically making the round a little bit bigger. It might also be providing a little more friction inside of the magazine. So as I go to get that fifth round in, it's just getting hung up on something. That could be why it happens sometimes and not other times. And that seems kind of nuts, and you'd think you'd have problems chambering with that. I personally didn't have that problem with my rifle, but some people have reported that problem. I haven't taken this out with my other Mauser yet to verify that, but those are my ideas for what might be causing that problem. If you see this ammo somewhere, it's probably wise to shoot a few rounds through your rifle before you go out and buy two to three hundred. This ammo was manufactured in the Sadu plant, and if you go back a couple months, you'll see my video on Romanian 8mm Mauser made in 1975. That ammo was also made in the Sadu plant. This is one of the larger ammo plants in Romania, so it makes sense that this ammo would have been manufactured there. In addition, there is a uh, 13 on the head stamp, that is probably for the year 2013. 2013, 2014 is when this ammo really started being imported into the United States. This ammo is labeled PWA and it comes in this gray box. Other importers did import this other than, oh, what does, other than whatever PWA stands for. Uh, so this ammo should be roughly the same. Now there is the older green box of this ammo and that's where I saw a lot more of the reports of keyholing. So it's possible that that was an issue, but they fixed it with the gray boxes. Um, so the earlier ammo had this issue, the later ammo did not. I'm not actually entirely clear on that, but looking at forums, people really complained a lot more about the green box than they did with the gray box ammo. The box says PWA sporting cartridges, aim for quality. 7.92 by 57 millimeter Mauser, 170 grain FMJ ball, lacquered steel case, Burdan primed, non-corrosive lead core, 20 cartridges made in Romania. We have a barcode on this side. On this side, we have the exact same info as the front of the box, same here. And then on the bottom, you have the warnings related to ammo. When you open it up, you'll see 20 rounds back and forth. Now, I have a few rounds pulled out of this one that we're going to talk about in just a moment, but it would be full back and forth, back and forth. Okay, if we look at the back of the round here, it has the green sealant on the primer, and it seems like they're pretty rough with the sealant because there's some on the back of the head stamp as well. 
There's also that green sealant around the mouth of the case and around the bullet. Then it says Sadu, and then there is a 13 right there. Sadu is the factory in Romania where this is made, and that 13 is probably indicative of 2013, the year of manufacture. If you look down inside, you will see that it is Burdan primed. That's why there's two holes on the outside versus one hole in the center. I didn't have the calipers with me to measure the actual bullet diameter, but we can talk about the weights. The bullet weight low was 168.1 grains, and the bullet weight high was 169.8 grains. That gives us a spread of 1.7 grains from the lowest to the highest. Now that is probably about average, maybe a little bit wider than what we would typically expect for 8mm Mauser ammo in the uh, variation there. However, the average was 169.08 grains. And 169 grains is pretty bizarre for 8mm Mauser, but I had no issues with it keyholing or anything like that, so it is being stabilized. Here are the bullets. They are not a boat-tailed projectile. There is that green sealant ring around right there. Now there is some damage on these. With these steel cases, I couldn't use a normal inertial bullet puller. I had to pull them apart with pliers. If you look at the back, uh, it is a solid lead cord projectile. However, the case is bimetal, and that's why right here it's able to be uh, held up with this magnet. And then it's just a normal pointed bullet. Powder weights are pretty typical. The low was 44.2 grains, the high was 44.8 grains, and that gives us an extreme spread of 0.6 grains and an average of 44.5 grains. We have a cylindrical extruded powder, which is the same for our older Romanian ammo, and it's being used today, apparently, too. My thoughts on this ammo. If you find it cheap and you verify that it works in your gun, send it. If it's not cheap, or if you don't know if it works in your gun and you need are forced to buy like 500 rounds, I would probably stay away, just because it is pretty crappy ammo. Now for plinking, crappy ammo is great. I shoot a lot of Winchester white box when I'm just out shooting. So crappy ammo is fine as long as it is affordable and takes care of the needs that you have. The other thing I would say is these boxes say it's not corrosive and I don't know if I trust them. I don't know that it isn't, I haven't tested it, and even if I did test it and it was non-corrosive, sometimes from these types of factories most of the ammo can be non-corrosive, and you can get either a couple rounds or a batch of ammo that is corrosive. It's just the weird thing with modern steel-cased ammo from former communist countries, whether it is Tula and Barnall or whether it is PWA. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm 8mm Mauser Man, and I exploded my paper target, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Big job. Big job.